Okay, so we're going to try to finish off um, section 12.1, and you'll be doing the homework uh, from section 12.1 um, for this assignment. And really, the last little bit is about how bonds and molecules have partial charges. Um, that's, we have several different ways of representing that, which we'll talk about. So the first question is, what are the symbols delta minus and delta plus mean in bonding? These are lowercase Greek deltas. Well, they mean partial charge, either a negative or positive partial charge. They're used to designate which end of a polar covalent bond has which charge. And as you have learned from electronegativity, you might be able to guess that the end that has the larger electronegativity in a polar covalent bond will be negative, partially negative, and the end that has a smaller electronegativity will be partially positive. Okay, so what's the relationship between electronegativity and bond type? Well, polar bonds are kind of, well, they're, they're still covalent, but they also have a partially ionic uh, uh, characteristic. That means kind of a positive and negative end. And they try to show that in table 12.1. So when there's basically no electronegativity difference, it's a pure covalent bond. Polar covalent bonds are kind of intermediate. They have a little bit of covalent, they have a lot of covalent character and they can have increasing amounts of ionic character depending on how big of electronegativity difference they have. And then finally, when the electronegativity is really big, it's going to be an ionic bond. Just like um, that little simple table that we talked about last time that gave the values that could kind of be used to tell you whether it's nonpolar, polar, or covalent bond type. Now, what is a dipole? A dipole is a vector that we draw along a chemical bond pointing from the least electronegative atom, that's the tail of the vector, to the most electronegative and uh, most electronegative atom, that's the head of the arrow in a polar covalent bond. Now, what does a vector mean? Most of you have had math, but if you don't know what a vector means, all it means is it's essentially an arrow that has a direction and a magnitude. So the direction is always going to be along the bond. The magnitude, we draw them longer when there's a big electronegativity difference, so we draw them shorter when there's a small electronegativity difference. So that arrow works similar to the delta plus and delta minus. The arrow head indicates the negative side of the bond, partially negative side, and the tail indicates the partially positive side. Nonpolar covalent bonds and ionic bonds do not have dipoles. We do not draw arrows. We don't do delta plus, delta minus, nothing with nonpolar covalent or ionic bonds. Now, here's an example of a dipole. So a dipole shows which end of the polar bond is par partially positive and which is partially negative. So below I've got some atoms and their electronegativities are shown. So you can see I've got an oxygen atom with 3.4, a chlorine atom with 3.2, and a hydrogen atom at 2.2. Uh, where would there be a dipole and where would it be pointing if there is one? Well, there is one. There's a dipole that exists along the HO bond. The difference between 3.4 and 2.2 is 1.2. That clearly is in the range for a polar covalent bond. Over here, 3.4 and 3.2, those are very close. So they're considered a nonpolar covalent bond. Why does the arrowhead point towards the oxygen? The oxygen has the larger value. The tail of the arrow points towards the hydrogen. It has the smaller value. Now, what's a dipole moment? Now, a dipole moment sometimes is the same as a dipole. If you have a molecule with a dipole moment, all it means is it's got a positive side and a negative side. So if you have a two atom molecule that has a dipole, it automatically has a dipole moment. But you'll see it's a little more complicated than that when we get multiple atoms in a molecule. Now we indicate a dipole moment by drawing an arrow from the center of positive charge to the center of negative charge. In a two-atom molecule, it's the same as the dipole, the way you draw that. However, it's not going to be the same once we get more complicated molecules. So here's a two-atom molecule. Fluorine end is delta minus, hydrogen end is delta plus, and we've got our dipole moment drawn from the center of positive charge, which is the hydrogen, towards the center of negative charge, which is the fluorine. If you wanted to draw just a dipole, it would actually be the same arrow because this one only has one dipole and has a dipole moment because it's a two atom molecule. Three atom molecules are a little more complicated. 
okay? So here we've got a water molecule. Here are the partial charges. Um, again, I didn't put the electronegativity values in. Hydrogen's 2.2, oxygen is um, 3.4. So there's a 1.2 electronegativity difference between the hydrogen and the oxygen, and that means this is gonna be partially positive because this is a polar covalent bond, and this will be partially negative. And now do you notice we've got two dipoles this time? because we've got two bonds, unlike the previous example where there was just two atoms and one bond. So you draw the dipoles wherever there are, uh, along a bond, wherever there is a charge difference. Since we've got two bonds, we draw two dipoles. Dipole moments for molecules, the way we figure them out is they are an arrow that points from the center of positive charge. Look, you've got a center of positive charge here, a center of positive charge here, they're the same size. The arrow tail starts right in the middle of those two, and the arrow head points towards the center of negative charge, which happens to be the oxygen atom. So it's an arrow that's sort of dissecting our oxygen molecule. That is a dipole moment for this compound. And what the dipole moment shows is that this side of the water molecule has a positive charge, this side has a negative charge. And when you're reading through the textbook, you should make sure you look at figure 12.6, because figure 12.6 shows um, how water orients itself when it's near things like uh, sodium, atom, uh, um, sodium ions and chloride ions in solution.